The new Samyang 85 f1.4 for FE mount. The new autofocus lens that I've been very keen to try out. So 85mm lenses, it's been my favourite focal length for a number of years now. Uh, love using it for portraits, weddings especially, but also even standing back and getting some wide shots, it gives it a real distinctive look. So Samyang have, just these last couple of weeks, released this, the 85 1.4 for Sony. The main thing being, it is priced at the exact same amount as the 85 1.8 from Sony, but it's a 1.4. That's quite a big deal. In the world of photography, if you're looking for a fast piece of glass, like a 1.4, something that can do great results in low light, you're gonna be looking at quite an expensive lens. This is only 599 in the UK, uh, and this is only 599 in the UK. It's the exact same price for something that is meant to be a step above. So Samyang, or Rockin' On if you're in the States, have been producing some quality lenses for the last couple of years, to be honest their cinema grade lenses or their budget cinema grade lenses have been quite impressive. I've picked up a few to go with the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema 4K, which I'll be showing you all soon. But photography wise, their lenses have been getting some really good reviews. They released a 35 2.8, which was a very budget, small walk around wide angle lens, medium wide angle lens. Um, they also reduced a 50 mil 1.4, which I never got to test. They've now followed it up with this, the 85 1.4, and they are producing E-mount or Sony mount lenses uh, quite thick and fast, to be honest. There's some more on the horizon, um, but this was one that really caught my eye. As I say, 85mm is one of my favorite lenses, and it's something that I really needed to try out. Now, I've been given this lens for just one week. I am not sponsored in any way by Samyang, the distributor, anyone else. The only stipulation that I've been told is I must give it back at the end of one week. I'll take you through a very quick unboxing of this. I will let you know my initial thoughts and then once I've reported back from the weddings, I'll be able to show you exactly what I captured with it and what my first impressions are after just a week. I've got high hopes, so we'll see how we get on with it. First things first, we'll take it out of the box and we can compare it to this and just see what it feels like in the hand. Uh, I will say this is a review unit. It is a production model, finally. Um, it has the word golden written on the top there, which I'm not quite sure exactly what that means. I've got a feeling it's just been tested by the distributor to make sure that it's all working well and there's no known issues with the lens. Um, but I could be completely wrong with that. So opening it up, the first thing I'll say is this has already been opened before, so I don't know exactly if what you're gonna get in a retail box is identical to this, but it should be the same. Um, let me just take that off there. We can see the lens straight away. We are greeted with the lens and it's quite a big lens to be honest. The only other thing of note in the box is what is actually a very nice quilted pouch for the lens. That's quite a nice touch. Um, nothing else in this box, so I'm not sure exactly what I was expecting to find, but, and I will put it right down next to the 85 1.8. Now, it is a 1.4, I was expecting it to be bigger. My first impressions when I saw it at the NEC at the photo show, I was quite surprised at how big it was or how chunky it was, but, I don't really know what I was expecting at f1.4, it's going to be bigger. Um, I'll take the lens hoods off first so you can get a real good idea of the size of the lens itself. And I'll even take the lens caps off as well. So straight away we can see the size difference and it is as you'd expect. The actual glass itself is quite a bit bigger. The weight, there's not much difference in weight. I must I must say I'm 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 quite impressed with the fact that they've kept it so lightweight. The weight of it, although the size is bigger, which isn't a problem, is not still not huge compared to some glass that you can get from the likes of Sigma with their art range. They're quite chunky lenses and quite heavy. Um, the weight difference isn't much to be found, to be honest. So this lens weighs in at 568 grams, and I'll have to check and put up on screen now, but the Sony weighs in at... The Samyang really does have a quality construction that you'd expect, um, very durable, it's supposedly weather resistant and splash proof and dust proof, which is exactly what you need, especially when you're out and about. 
any sort of use for weddings especially but just any use in the field to be honest you just want to know that it's going to work and it's not going to break down on you over something silly there are obviously no long-term reviews on this just yet but at least it ticks those boxes that we need to see from the off the other thing of note with the construction on this lens is there are no other buttons there's no manual autofocus there's no focus hold buttons that like you do get with the sony which is something i know i'm going to miss i use that button i have that button mapped to eye autofocus and i use it um, so I am gonna miss that, but I don't see how it's gonna really stop me from wanting to buy the lens should the lens perform really well. Um, it's just a very simple design. Again, it keeps the cost down and I'm all for that, to be honest. I'll be using it with an a7 III, so I'll just pop it on now so you can see what it looks like and how it fits with the grip. And there we have it. Obviously, it's a much larger lens than the other prime lenses that I use, but doesn't seem to affect the grip at all. I got chunky fingers and they can fit in there quite nicely, so no issues there. Certainly looks a little bit more intimidating now. That's one thing I love about the Sony's is they've become a much smaller camera that you can use and a little bit less intimidating, especially at a wedding and when people are always looking, oh, where's the photographer? Um, not that it's that much bigger, but it's a little bit more noticeable. Um, certainly a chunky lens, but I'm all for that if it gives me better results. So, I got this lens for a week. It coincides actually over the busy Easter weekend, uh, which is a busy time for me anyway, let alone the fact that I've got two weddings chucked in over this weekend. I'm going to be using it on the first wedding for just photography, and then the second wedding actually is just video. So I'm gonna use it for just videography and see what that turns out like, especially with its focusing. I'm gonna try out the manual focus, but also I wanna try out the autofocus. Everyone's been asking me, is it silent autofocusing? So, fingers crossed. We should be able to get some really good video work out of it as well. Okay, I'm gonna cut some B-roll so you can see a little closer what this lens looks like. And the next thing you'll see will be photos and video from this camera. Let's see what it can do. Okay, okay, right. This is the best 85 for the money. Just look at some of these images. So it's hard to deny the results. I've used this lens for one wedding. Um, it performed perfectly. The focusing was snappy in all conditions, low light, didn't matter. The bokeh, the way it renders the bokeh, it's very subjective with any lens. And the way this renders the bokeh and the sharpness at 1.4, is wonderful it, on the Sony a7 III, especially using eye autofocus, it nails it every time. It just works. I took a picture of our friend here, Chris. He was actually a guest at this wedding. Um, 
even though his eyes were shut, it nailed it. There was no performance issues with the a7 III and this lens. You can just see just, just the way the bokeh looks. It's absolutely lovely. I'm very, very impressed. For the money, for 599, you're getting such a good lens. Um, at the time of going to press, there's actually a £50 cashback on this, which brings it down to £550. Um, in the US, I think it's still around six, dollars $700. It's an absolutely superb lens. It's hard. It's hard because the Sony is a great performer. The Sony has a couple of nice little touches, like the manual switch for focusing, from manual to autofocus, and the focus hold button. And that is one thing that I would love this to have. But above all, I want great images. And if this helps me achieve great images, then I'm on board. If you just look at the other 85mm lenses that are available for native mount for Sony at the moment, there is the G Master uh, right at the top, which is a £1,600 lens. I think it's nearly $2,000 in the US, which is a lot of money. That's also a 1.4. It has a few bonuses. It's Sony, and it is probably the pinnacle of 85mm on the Sony system. If you're looking for something close to it, but you also want to save some money, then the Sigma Art Lens is definitely one that everyone would have been recommending. That is also a 1.4, currently retailing at just over £900 in the UK or $1,000 in the US. Both of those lenses, they're big chunky lenses, but they perform and that's exactly what you want from your 85. Um, this has now come along challenging those and I don't think it's quite as good, but I argue even a professional, if you were to put images taken with either of those lenses of the same model in the same circumstances, you'd still find it very hard to find a difference. Now I can't say I've sat here and tested all of them because I haven't. I've had a little play with them each from time to time, but I have not tested them properly. This I have tested and coming from what was classed as the budget lens, at the moment this is actually cheaper and you can achieve such great results. I want to touch on video work for this as well. So that was day one with the lens photography. I also then took this out the next day for a wedding film that I was shooting and I didn't use it lots, but I used it enough to get a good feel for it. When the moment allowed, I used it during the ceremony itself, which was actually quite nice to use. Um, and then in the afternoon, there was just a few little moments of downtime where I was able to get some creative shots, just some natural shots of people enjoying themselves and this is what I managed to do with that. So for video use, as you can see, it's a really great performer. Tack sharp when you need it, snappy focus, silent autofocus, which was something that I was concerned about and everyone kept asking. Silent autofocus, which is a dream to use, especially during the ceremony. Um, you just don't want to hear the focusing noise and I couldn't hear a thing. Reviewing it back, I know I haven't been able to show you on that film properly, but just reviewing it back, even when you're, you're playing the footage back, when it's trying to focus or gaining focus, it's never been an issue, couldn't hear a thing. Manual focus was lovely and responsive. 
I know a lot of it can come down to being used with the A7 III, but it just, it worked and it worked brilliantly. You do get a tiny bit of vignetting, but it's ever so slight. Um, the lens flare is quite unique on it. I quite like the lens flare actually. A few of those shots at the end with the video, especially you can see shooting into the sun, how it renders that lens flare and it's quite pleasant. And it, I like lens flare, some people don't like it at all, but I was shooting that without the lens hood as well. So not a problem for me. The question is, when you're looking for a good, reasonably budget-friendly 85mm lens, which one do you go for? It has to be the new Samyang. It just has to be. It's a little bit cheaper. The way it renders this bokeh is lovely. The colors pop. It's a little bit faster at f1.4, giving you that little bit of extra performance in low light. Overall, it's a winner. The second question is, is it worth the upgrade? That is a very tough question. If you can get good money for your Sony 85 on the second hand market, it may be worth the upgrade. For me, from a professional point of view, I think it is. I just, those little things that I've mentioned, the pros, there's hardly any cons to it whatsoever, other than minimum focusing distance, which is about a meter back, um, but it's not a macro lens and I wouldn't use it for anything like that. Um, there are no real cons to it. It is such a good lens. I know some of the other reviews now have been coming out already and it just has been performing brilliantly for everyone. And I get it, they're onto a winner. Samyang have really stepped up their game the last couple of years and this is just another quality example of what they can do. Not much else I can say other than going on again how good this lens is. I did not think I was going to like it as much as I did and I love it. So I'm going to have to get one. I'm also going to have to update my three prime lenses that I recommend. Uh, I did a little video series last month just saying the three prime lenses that I recommend and this was one of them. In fact, this is one of my favorites. Um, but I think this has just pipped it to the post. Hope you enjoyed the video review. Thanks again for watching. Please do subscribe and hit the notification bell if you want to be kept informed of any other videos we've got coming out in the future. Don't forget to like and let us know your thoughts on this in the comments below. Love to know what people are thinking regarding this and whether or not you're gonna be upgrading yourself. As always, it's been a pleasure and I will catch you in the next one.